All right, welcome back, and uh, I hope you've got your fireplace ready, or your campfire at least, and uh, welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and I uh, wanted to just say real quick, everybody around the house is feeling better. Thank you guys for your wishes and your prayers of us getting past these colds with the little ones. Um, <coughs> I still have a little bit of one um, tingling around the back of my throat. Um, but uh, feeling much better as well. Matter of fact, feeling so good, I think I'm, I've got uh, two uh, more uh, encounter stories from individuals uh, ready for you this week. And right now I'm going to bring one to you today. So just kind of out of the blue on a nice <laughs> Monday morning. Um, also wanted to say real quick, thank you yesterday to um, not only the Sasquatch Coffee Company, um, Gunner up there, but also to his uh, uh, Monster X radio show that you guys can find on Blogspot. Uh, being in <clears throat> and interviewed on there for uh, about an hour and a half was just a lot of fun and uh, um, sharing kind of what ba you know PacWest Bigfoot is about where you know I, I basically here is what I do I, I bring about um, you know some some based on a true story stories for you so that's what we want to do here and that's what we enjoy doing and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to get into an encounter right now called Shadowed by a Bigfoot near Yakult I thought I was a dead woman I was shadowed by a Bigfoot near Yakult, and I seriously thought I was a dead man, or dead woman in my case. <clears throat> I was out that late afternoon to clear my mind and at the same time get some painting done. I was somewhat still new to the Yakult, Washington area at the time. I had heard of the stories of Bigfoot growing up in the Napa Valley. Everyone in Northern California has. <clears throat> but I never thought... They were real until that day in 1992 when I saw one near a river where I lived. Here's my account. From wine country to back country, I am an artist. I have loved paintings since I was a child growing up in the Napa Valley, actually Calistoga, California to be exact. Eventually I narrowed down that passion to painting uh, of paint, uh, for painting to watercolor. And yes, this has, has to do with my Bigfoot sighting, well, sort of sighting. It was not until after college that I decided to relocate up north, so after graduation I moved to Yakult, Washington, Yakult, Washington in 1990, a beautiful place by the way. I wanted to move, simply put, because I wanted to live somewhere else, not too far away from home, but far enough away to feel far enough away, if you get what I'm saying. I just wanted to move away from home is all. Yakult is still a small town, but it has a huge story. The whole area actually does, and unfortunately not all of it is that comfortable, especially when you are confronted with it. I have since read some books like Haunted Valley and such uh, uh, for uh, insights uh, into this area, its history with Bigfoot and all. I was amazed at all the history <clears throat> about this thing here, especially when it comes to the native uh, uh, to the native contact and well interaction, for lack of a better word. Mostly, however, I was amazed by the beauty of the place. And just so you know, part of the experience I had that day was part or all of the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will, of why I moved back to Napa a few months later. I wanted to paint up near the Bells Mountain Trailhead area by the Lewis River, just outside of Townaways. There was a trail, a waterfall, and if I wanted, there was a large pool of water downstream, uh, a bit that was beautiful during the early spring. And this time of the year, all kinds of flowering plants, bushes, and trees, for that matter, were coming back to life, and I wanted to catch that in a painting. That day I would opt for the larger pools of water downstream where it was quieter. And there were relatively no people and the sun was out, well, for the most part, that made the green water reflect the trees and foliage for a beautiful scene. Trail Sense and Loneliness I would head out in the late afternoon. <clears throat> Everyone knows who has been there that the sun is best in the latter part of the day instead of early morning. Well, if you are into photography and, or painting, that is, like I am. Besides, my soon-to-be ex-fiancé would be back that night, and I did not want to be home when he returned, at least not the moment he arrived. We were on the outs. Well, I was. He was just not aware of what I knew he did at that point. Painting would be a great way to calm down, gain some perspective, get past the anger, and figure out what I wanted to say, and how, when I returned later that evening. It was sad, the whole situation, and on top of that, I was really hurt and angry. 
but enough of the personal issues at the time, I just wanted to let you know some of why I was out and about that late afternoon. I wanted to be alone that afternoon, and being mostly a sunny day, they, <clears throat> there were going to be some people up and down the main trail from the trailhead to the waterfall. That is why I chose downstream. I only noticed an older couple heading back up the trail. They did stop me and warn me that there was a possible bear down near where I would be. They said they could hear it moving about, probably eating some of the early berries and whatnot. Being spring, it could be a female, so a female bear with cubs could be an issue if you do not pay attention, even the smaller black bear species. But I was not all that worried about mama bears at the moment. My mind was elsewhere, and I, was, I just wanted to paint it all out, all of my aggressions. I had everything I needed with me, a small radio, my easel, my paint brushes, and creation. I also brought some snacks, a couple of them sweets, and I remember not taking them out for a while just in case there was a hungry mama bear out and about. After a short walk, I made it to the pool, as I like to call it, and I was right. That time of the day, the sunlight created a nice reflection of the trees and nature in general on the water. I got everything set up, and even the radio station I loved came in rather clear, rather clearly for being a ways out and in a bit of a canyon-like area. I started painting, and it was 15 minutes into it that a splash wrecked my perfect reflection of the sky and trees on the water. Rocks and tree breaks. I could not tell which way it came from at first, the other side of the river. My side? I was not sure because I did not see it coming, but it was a decent sized rock, to be sure. While I was a little irritated, I thought at first, like anyone else, that it was some person, jerk more like it, interrupting my afternoon. Trust me, I was in plain view of everything. Anyone could see me uh, along that part of the bank. I calmed down a bit and decided to take a sip of water. That is when I almost spit it out through my nose as yet another rock came flying from the trees and splashing into the water. However, this time, it came, I could see it. It came from uh, uh, over my head behind me. I was not frightened as much as I was kind of mad. Okay, really mad. I turned and faced the thick forest behind me and yelled. Hopefully that would take care of them or at least let them know that I was mad. I stood there, still staring into the trees. I saw no movement, but then again, an elephant could move through there, and I could probably not see it at that time of the day. Either way, I decided to get back to painting now that the water was still again, and I said my piece to the thrower of rocks. All was quiet for about thirty minutes more, and that is when I heard what sounded like trees breaking or being snapped, I guess. Snap! Snap! It was a clean break, you could tell, or breaks, and it was a rather thick limb, too. I immediately turned my head to look behind me, but once again, no movement came from the forest at all. As a matter of fact, the noise of birds was absent at the time as well. This is when that creepy feeling started to come over me. I felt as though I was being watched, and I was. I kept standing there, I remember. I was leaning forward a bit, trying to listen and look into the woods for anything at all. Movement, sound, anything. Then all of a sudden, I got another tree break. The sound was close, probably within 40 yards of where I was standing at the moment, and just a bit to my left. It was a loud snap, and then I could hear the limb hit the ground as it was apparently tossed in the opposite direction the snapping came from. Not far from it, but just opposite of it. Movement, and I mean me. What in the world, who in the world throws rocks that far and breaks off what sounds like large limbs on a tree out here? I may be from Napa, but know that I am not ignorant of wildlife, and especially what lives in the Pacific Northwest. Well, at least I thought I knew everything that was out here. I still could not hear or see any movement, so I decided I needed to remove myself from the situation. Besides, I was getting re a really bad and creepy feeling still, and it was growing into fear for some reason. I got everything together and started off for the 15 to 20 minute walk back to the car. Hopefully whatever it was would leave me be now that I was leaving. Well, that was the hope. Just as I started up the trail, I heard movement. 
At that moment, I knew why I was feeling frightened. Whatever it was, was huge. It had to be. I could hear the footfall, and I could hear it as it moved through the thick brush about 40 or so yards away. It was close, and it was coming closer. I then picked up the pace. I did not get even 20 feet up that path when I noticed some movement out of the corner of my eye. Well, not really the corner of my eye, more or less, just southeast of the trail in front of me. When you realize you are in a situation you are not sure you'll live through, panic can set in, and that is when you can become your own worst enemy. That was something my dad taught me, and he was a physician and a medic in the army, army too. The best thing you could do at that point, he said, was to keep a level head and look for a way out or a way to reverse the situation into your favor. The shadow of a body stepped out near the path about 30 yards or so ahead of me. To get past it, I would have to walk practically, practically right up to it. Not happening, I thought. Not by what this thing looked like. Before I continue, though, I have to say this thing was at least a few heads taller than my soon-to-be ex-fiancé, and he was 6'4". I could not make out a face or what it uh, was exactly. The only reference I had for that moment was Bigfoot. Broad-shouldered, tall, it was Bigfoot. That thought alone sent a shiver up my spine. It was getting darker, and here I was, not a soul around except for some animal or creature that was big enough. Uh, it, it looked like it could eat me in one bite. Snap. I watched as it reached up with its left arm, grabbed a branch, and snapped it off. It then threw it towards me. I knew now this was a Bigfoot. I could not believe it, but it was. And I knew that I was going to have to do what Dad said. Find a new way out. And fast. This thing looked as though it was not going to move anytime soon. There was only one way across the river. It was not all that swift here. But it was much more shallow than downstream and upstream around the bend. I looked back over my shoulder and it looked as though that creature had moved closer to me but was shrouded in darker shadows as if it was back further than the trees, but closer to me trail-wise. I tightened the strap on my backpack, and I held my easel above my head and waded out into the water. The only thing I could not take was my radio. I had to leave it behind. Better that radio than my life, of course. This time of year, however, snow remained on the mountains and was slowly melting and flowing down into the rivers and creeks around here, so the water bit me. Like a dog on a postman, I had to make this crossing fast. Five minutes in there, and I'd have died either way. Shoot, four to five minutes in there, and I would have died either way. I got to nearly my waist when I heard crashing through the woods, but this time it was as if the Bigfoot creature was moving past me, heading down river, I supposed. I got out of the water quickly and started running back up the trail in the opposite direction that it was blocking before. I would not have to risk the frigid water after all, although I was not, although I was now cold, wet, and scared. And by the time I reached the car, I was tired, but still in panic mode. With a whole bunch of fear mixed in, it was practically dark at this point, and there was not a car or soul around, just me and some huge monster of the woods, apparently. I started the car and was off, peeling out of the dirt as I left ex-fiancé in Napa bound. I remember not having a big blowout argument with my ex-fiancé that night. Life was a little different after that encounter near the, uh, near the river. However, we did split up, obviously, and I soon moved back home to Napa Valley. Not to Calistoga, but pretty close. I have to admit, I still have nightmares about that incident from time to time, and even though it did not totally wreck me for the outdoors and painting it all out, as they say, I rarely go alone, and if I do, it is close to home. And just so you know, thinking about painting what I could see that early evening by the river outside Yakult, Washington. And I'll let you know when I do, and if I do. Thank you. Malia.